Your favorite Indian spice? Green cardamom. Why? Because it's in my tea. <laughs> and everything else I cook. I love it. I love the flavor. Uh, which, uh, which spices will I find in your kitchen? Uh, I don't know. There's about 50 of them. Everything from Java, black pepper to... For most frequently used at what's in my little spice box rather than the cupboard is I think green cardamom, there's coriander seed, there's cumin seed, there's uh, cinnamon and salt. Oh, black, I use a lot of black pepper. Which Indian spices? But if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I bought a really fancy pepper mill. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. So, so which Indian spices have you mainstreamed in your uh, commercial restaurants? I don't run restaurants anymore, but if I'm, if I'm, all the essentials, and now I'm just listing more spices, but yeah, black pepper plays an important role, but things like star anise, for example, because it's so aromatic, um, and fresh aromatics, like different types of chili. Kashmiri chili for, I appreciate, I really appreciate Kashmiri chili now. Um, what else do I really love? Uh, Kir Sangri, for example, which is, you know, I think it's uh, Kashmiri, I might be wrong. No, Rajasthani. Rajasthani, Rajasthani, you're right. Desert, think desert. So, yeah, things like that are really interesting. Next Indian superfood. Oh, that's too hard. What's the next Indian superfood? What are they all talking about? In your about? opinion. Huh. Yeah, but what are they all talking about now? Gee, millets, are, millets we're done with millets, aren't we? Um, I don't know, you know what I think, you know what I'm really enjoying seeing? is the emergence of preservation of milk. And what I mean by that is cheese. You know, so we talk about uh, paneer, and everybody even knows paneer, but it's just like paneer. And there's this emerging artisan kind of culture of preservation of milk, making all sorts of things, whether European cheeses or otherwise, um, that's really kind of um, becoming quite, there's a momentum, and I'm enjoying that. Because you produce a lot of milk, there's a lot of great buffalo milk, you know, there's yak, but what's the female? There's actually a yak is a male. It's what's the female? You probably I don't. It's, isn't it a dark meat or something like that? Anyway, look it up. But anyway, things like that. So you know, you can go into a small community, and they often struggle in. You know, that's where cheese came from. Preservation of milk. So we'll see. It's very small, but we'll see what happens. Street food you like best? Street food. We talked about tea. I love tea. It's not food, but it kind of is. Yeah, but but it, a street food. But it gives me an opportunity to stand there and watch the world go by wherever I am, and I have to stop for tea at least two or three times. And I like plenty of pepper, plenty of ginger, and plenty of uh, green cardamom in, uh -huh. in my. No, but nothing, nothing from uh, you know street food. But let me food. think of street food that I love. Oh, I'll tell you what I fell in love with was um, kachuri alu jol. Oh. Yeah. So I had it for breakfast pretty much every day. Once I got the taste for the uh, asfetida in the in the jol. Uh huh. <sighs> really lovely. And what else? Did I really, because I ate vegetarian pretty much exclusively. I did exclusively for about 12 days when we were in Braj Bhumi and I didn't miss meat at all. And there's certain curd and, you know, pea dishes and chole dishes and particularly alu tiki and, uh, you know, things like um, gujia and stuff like that that I really fell in love with. And uh, what's the name for curds? Because it will r remind me. What's a curd called? Dahi. Um, Dahi. You know, so certain. Dahi chart. For example. You know, which I really um, fell in love with. Is that good enough? Do you like that? Something different? Yeah. yeah. What is your dream Indian now experience? Now I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Dream Indian experience. I'm just about to go on it. Leila Dak. I can't wait. I've been thinking about it for so long. It's totally different, uh, totally out of this world. And I think maybe even when I've talked to you last, the, the idea of traveling around and traveling around India and discovering new things is such a pleasure. So the things I haven't done is that trail through Manali or Shimla or, you know, is it McLeod Gange and things like this in, in the, you know, the cusp of the Himalayas. So to be able to go to Leila Dak will be filling in the gaps before I then fill in those ones. Um, and I was just thinking of something funny. I was in Australia and we, uh, uh, I went to, a, I flew up to Sydney just for a dinner with, uh, Pratak Sadhu, you know, from Mask in Mumbai. I don't know if you remember him. Yes. And uh, he'd flown over with Nell Robinson, who's an Australian chef, or an English chef was in Australia. They did a menu, uh, menu. Had to go, went. And they served a tea at the end. And it was, I missed the explanation. I was talking and I picked it up and it was, and it had almonds in it. And I said, oh, this is a Kashmiri uh, tea. Yeah. And he said, yeah, it is. He goes, how do you know that? And I said, you know, they drink this on the first snowfall? And he said, do they? I said, yeah. 
<laughs> and it's a, whether that's right or wrong, but I think it's right. It's kind of the pleasure of the experiences that I've had on this journey where, you know, I get that little, those little things. And I, I there's almost a pleasure in, you know, correcting Indians when they don't know the detail of one of the festivals yeah, that we've been on. Because, you know, like they celebrate Holi every year, but it might be for one day. Mm. Whereas in Braj Bhumi, they celebrate it for 40 days. Uh -huh. And there's, you know, there's, they said, what? Well, you, what's that? And I said, oh, it's this, 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 and this. And they're quite surprised. I'm not an expert, but it's, it's given me a deeper understanding, you know, traveling around, that there's so much diversity and people are often just not aware of, oh, I've never been to Nightland or I've never been to, okay. you know, Madurai, for example. And talking of India, I cannot but leave out Bollywood. This was supposed to be rapid fire. Yeah, that's what. Now, your favorite Bollywood film or actor, what exactly you love about Bollywood? I can't... I'm terrible with Bollywood names. Ah. I mean, you know, actually, even let's put, the, let's put this into perspective. Even when I get invited to the most celebrity-driven event in Australia, I can't remember other celebrities' names. <laughs> like I have photos with celebrities and my wife goes, oh my God, did you have a photo with I go, oh, is that who it was? So when you ask me about Bollywood, it's not because I don't know, it's because I just can't remember. I am shocking, absolutely <laughs> shocking. Um, what movies have I watched that I've really loved? There was a, there was, and it's not Bollywood, but there was an Indian, I love Indian movies like this. There was a, a movie about two female wrestlers, two young girls. Does anybody know? Dunga. 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 I loved that movie. Ah. It's like one of my favorite movies. Just beautiful. Oh. But the, the song and dance, and I, I appreciate the joy, mm. but it's it's not always my thing. I prefer more, you know, deeper stuff that you get your fingers into. Oh. Is that, I know it doesn't answer the question. So. No, 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 it does. And who's the guy I always see, and everybody goes, what, you still, and they've told me his name a hundred times, so apologies if you ever see this. He's got big glasses, he's an older guy, everybody knows who he is, and he's on every poster. If you're in... Amitabh Bachchan. Is it? Who is it? Say his name. Amitabh Bachchan. That's it. And I still won't remember. Tomorrow I won't remember. I hope I'll meet him one day, because then I'll finally remember his name. And I said, is this guy a nice guy? And everybody that's met him said he is the most wonderful human being on the planet. <laughs> Okay, last question. Which is one Indian dish which you want to recreate in your own style? Ooh. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's not one dish. It's I find that when I come here, I'll have like that bun parata, for example. I go, right, I'm going to go home and I'm going to make it. And as a chef, I think I feel that I should be able to make it. I know the technique. I know what I'm trying to achieve. I know the lamination. It's obvious, right? I know the texture of the dough, so I should be able to make it. But it's that skill, you know, actually, he's a master. That, the young man that was, I filmed him on my Instagram, uh, put it on my Instagram, and he was just smiling at me, looking at me. And he's, throwing, he's throwing this, you know, burrata, not even looking at it. He's made thousands of them. And it's tissue thin. He folds it up, chucks it down. It's all full of air. And then they pick it up and put it on the, you know, on the pan. And I just go, I can do that. And I get home and it's the clumsiest, rid most ridiculous, terrible parotta on the planet. And so it's little things like that that I really strive to master. Yeah. It's not a particular dish, but it, that's just an example. Like I'll eat something. Like many years ago, uh, there was a chef who I actually cooked it on MasterChef. I, I cooked a moile on MasterChef. Cooked two curries or two dishes, I shouldn't call them curries, and one was a moil, I can't remember what the other one was, and I asked this gentleman, his name was uh, Saji Alex for this recipe, and he sent it to me, and we communicated it via, we communicated via WhatsApp video. So he sent me a video of the texture of the sauce, and I made it, I sent my video back. This is what chefs do sometimes, right? And he said, no, nah, too thick, too many, too many onions, like your onions are this big, our onions are like this big, so I made it again, and then he goes, yeah, that's right. And, but I never actually ate his dish until I was filming for this show. See how I brought that back to the show? It's a bit teasing. And I didn't eat this dish until I went and filmed it on own, and I, uh, they cooked it for me, and thank goodness it was pretty close. Because I, I had this funny idea, because I always struggle recreating it often with different ingredients, like onions, back in Australia, it's not quite right. And so I made them cook it for me, cooked it for me, and I ate it, and I just went, wow, like it's such, it's so beautiful. 